Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Normally, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Let me answer. Let me put my years of game playing, event organizing, and game night hosting to use for you. So normally, as uh, the Tabletop Bellhop, I answer gamers, uh, gaming game night questions. And I do that over on our blog at tabletopbellhop.com. Today, if there's a question to be answered, it's going to be how good am I at building box inserts and how well does the folded space box insert for eminent domain work? So what I'm doing today is I have to give thanks to my podcast co-host, Sean, for picking this up. He bought this set of inserts from Folded Space. Uh, that's at foldedspace.net. And we are going to use this to build an insert for these games here. So what I have here is Eminent Domain from Tasty Minstrel Games, as well as the Exotica expansion and the Escalation expansion. Now, this uh, insert is meant to also hold the Oblivion expansion, but I don't own that one yet. So at this point, these are empty. I've already taken the components out because I've been playing this game. So these two little boxes are empty. And I will show you what shape my main box is in. So I have done some work. So I kept the leftover stickers. So when you buy exotic other stickers for the components, not, you don't need all of them. Or maybe with the other expansion, there's more cubes. So I kept these just in case. So that's all I've got. I don't think I'm going to put those in the insert. Now we're going to open this up and I'll show you what's in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip the camera so you can see down. Because you don't need to see me to see this. So we're going to turn things around and tip things so you can see what's in here. I'll show you what's in the original box, and then we'll take this insert open, take a look at it, and I'll be building that over the next little while, however long that takes. So again, you can find my content at tabletopbellhop.com, where normally we answer your gaming and game night questions. If you've got a gaming or game night question, send it to questions at tabletopbellhop.com, or head over to that webpage and click on Ask the Bellhop. All right, enough about that. Let's get things set up over here. I am not as straight as I thought I was. Oh, I'm falling off the mice. Alrighty, so to start off with what it looks like now. So on the top, I've got the main rule book. Uh, this is a tech tree I printed off off the uh, internet. It's just a copy of what's on the back for playing the core game. I've got a rule summary that I printed off for teaching the game. Then I've got the other rule books for the game the two expansions. I've got the big tech tree. This is the, the big poster that shows all the technologies in the game. And then you got this mess, which works. It's not terrible, because I've got things sorted. So I've got a little container here for victory point tokens. Uh, this is actually a container that had clay that my kids used. I've got all the resource things in another one of those. The turn sequence things, um, I've just got loose because they're card. They're not gonna get damaged. The improved mining, those are in here just loose. Here's the rest of them. So those are, I, I just had in here loose, which is okay, not great. Then here we have one set of the technologies. So I've got a baggie with one set, and these are all the ones for the metal planets. Then here are all the starting worlds, just in a baggie. So all the potential starting worlds. Note with the expansions, you get a lot of them. Uh, here is the, the world deck. So all the different the worlds you can explore during play. Then we have the, the actual cards, like when you're playing the game, the, the cards you draft, the, the roll cards. This is obviously not the best solution because things kind of fall all over. The scenario decks, um, some are facing the other way because I don't like playing scenarios I've played before. So every time we play, we box them. Uh, then we've got all the ships and the additional ship tokens. Again, this isn't optimal because I've got cardboard tokens and with plastic miniatures. Then we've got the other technology decks. So technology decks, technology decks, technology decks, and technology decks. And then the board. And the little thing that came with uh, the promo pack for Exotica, which I should probably toss in the Exotica books. So the Raven Rolls noted that my uh, my storage looks better than most games they have already without using the insert. I try. I try to I try to organize my games as best I can uh, using mostly plastic baggies and sometimes with little plastic containers. So this was in pretty good shape, but you can tell it's a bit of a mess and I was hoping to have something a little easier. And I really wanted a better way to sort the different components from the different expansions separately. So here's my mess now of all these little baggies. So we're going to toss all these back over here into here. And like I said, it wasn't terrible. 
But I'm hoping this box insert makes things quicker. From what I understand, I'm going to have some trays that I can just take right out of the box and right into play, which I think is fantastic. That's something I'm really looking forward to. And having to sort out certain things might be nice too. So we're going to get this out of the way. We're never going to need these again, hopefully. Now we're going to take a look at what we get here. So this is still sealed. I haven't opened it, so I haven't seen what's in here yet. Should just be a bunch of foam core. That's generally what you get with folded space. All right. Is that it? That's it. Empty. Empty, empty. So we have the instructions, which I had a feeling this might be in, uh, uh, not a problem, but the instructions don't tell you what goes where. It's one of the things I found with the box insert company. So I do have uh, my monitor in front of me. I can bring it up once we get going. Um, this is the FSEMDOM. FSMDOM insert, which is compatible with Eminent Domain. Um, it's not a licensed Tasty Minstrel Games product, as far as I know, but I'm sure they're perfectly happy with it. Uh, there's a tree legend here. Oh, here it is. The legend tells you what goes where. Tree one large cards and so on, and where the bag goes. And assembly instructions. All right, I'm supposed to start on this side. Not too bad. Two-sided sheet. Side one. Side two. Doesn't look too bad. None of these seem to have any text or anything on them. So the last insert I built from Folded Space was for um, Genthus Deluxe. And what was nice on that is that the pieces actually showed you what went where. Doesn't look like this does that at all. So this is just a bunch of gray foam, no text on it. Actually, the sheets aren't even labeled like ABC. Oh, no, here we go. There's something here. I don't even know what that is. No, the same symbols on all of them. So we're going to put these aside and try to figure out which sheets we have. So A1 and A2 are the same, and then sheet B1. So I need A1 and A2. So which are which? Okay, this is one of the A's. So right now I need this big long piece. So this is coming off really nice. That came off very nicely. I can't complain about that at all. That also came off very nicely. Okay, and on sheet B1, I need something on the bottom, this right here. I got extra bits falling off, so I got to be careful of this. I don't want to lose these. So what I'm going to do is, do I need both of these? Yes, so I also need the ones off of A2. This, 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 that. And I guess I just need the one off B. Okay. So then we got to take these little tiny ones out. So I do have a hobby knife here in case I need it, which looks like I'm going to need it just to push that through. It's definitely cut well enough. Like this is not, not catching at all. It's just the nature of foam core sometimes. Little stick a little harder than you want so yeah see i left the bottom in just gonna pop that out through pop that through try to get all the extra bits out of the way so they don't confuse anyone Okay, so those are those two. Then I need these little pieces at the end. I'm not sure why some of these have, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. They have a little square on them. And I don't see anything to indicate. So, you know, I should probably read these. The pack indicates three sheets, two identical and a third different sheet. They're placing up to three layers in the original game box. PVA glue is required. Please make sure you dry assemble each piece. Please check the website for assembly tips. Okay. So I need this piece, it's going to go on the end here. We have a rounded end and a non-rounded end, interesting. Okay, so here, here, this is my dry fit. Not this one. And this, up at the top. 
Why do I feel? No, I guess that's right. All right, and then I'm going to need these all in between. So again, we're going to dry fit this first. Okay, that's a snug fit. That's a really snug fit. Almost wish I was using the glue the first time, but I know that's not how you should do it. So we're going to assemble this quick dry fit, and then I'll take it apart and glue it all together. So this is obviously going to hold all your cards. It's interesting is there's no bottom, so there's no way this one's going to... You're not going to take this tray out of the box. You're not going to be able to take the cards, take this tray out of the box, because the, <laughs> otherwise all the cards are going to stay behind. Nice snug fit. To be honest, you could probably get away with not gluing it, though I don't recommend it. All right, so that's what we're going for. Now to add the glue. I'm going to do a start on the edges. So I just have some literally Elmer's white glue, as white glue as you can get. And it really wants to come out. So just open this Elmer's glue today. Try not to get too much excess so it's sticking out all over the place. If I do, I can clean it up easy enough. So one of the things that folded space inserts being made out of foam core do require glue. Whereas many of the wooden box inserts, the woods often cut so tightly, like the pattern's so close that you can actually just hold them together by uh, tension or the friction or possibly even just with pieces of tape. When you are getting into a foam insert, you are looking at having to use some form of glue. Which I'm hoping this will dry quick enough we can put everything into the box when I'm all done. That's my goal. We'll see if we get that far. All right, so far so good. Now the fun part of trying to get glue on all these tips, putting it all together. So far, so good. This hasn't required a ridiculous amount of skill. Other advantage of foam is I don't need a mallet now to pound everything together, which is something I often had to do for the wooden box inserts. All right, we have one tray. What I'm going to do is use a little bit of this extra foam just to get some of the excess glue off the inside edges here. So there you have part one of the folded space insert for eminent domain. Step two. Tray 2, sheet 1A, that's this, we need this, 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 and that, there we go. Alright, again, dry run, we're going to put it together once. Make sure I know what I'm doing here, and I don't want to assemble something wrong. The first box insert I ever made in my entire life, I actually, excuse me, assembled incorrectly. Which really stank. <laughs> it was, for one, embarrassing. Two, I then had to sand off a nub, basically, that was sticking out of the bottom of a box, which was really annoying. Alright, so we're putting this here, and this here. And this is kind of brilliant, because what we got here is a nice holder for the cards, but there's a way to get your fingers in there. That's a nice touch. You can get your fingers right in there. Really impressed so far. Nice and solid. Well, once you glue it, that's why you glue things. All right. Pretty simple. We're going to start on the back edge here. Got a little too much glue there. 
a little more than I wanted. I don't know what's easier to put the pieces, the glue, like on here or on there. I've been kind of swapping it up. So it could be a little easier to do it the other way. I'm not sure. And we got the big side. Now at this point I'm going to be holding this. So it's going to be easier for me to, let's think. That is going to go flat there. There and there. That's going to give me the most contact. I'll get these little tabs as well. And then on this side, I'm going to hit here and here as well as here. Yeah, everything is sliding together very nicely. Nice and snug. I got a little excess glue, but I'll clean that up after. We're going to do the other side wall here. So far, for as far as inserts go, this has been pretty basic. No complicated, hard to assemble pieces. Um, some inserts definitely are more difficult than other. The most difficult one I've ever built was from Meeple Realty and was for Keyflower. And while I love the aesthetic of it, and I like the concept, they made it so that the, the container that holds the tiles in the game was shaped like a boat, which is a nice touch, but man was that thing a pain to build because it had a curved front and then it had this handle you pulled out to hold the tray. It was just overly complicated. And I'm like, yeah, it looks great. But you know what? Just building nice, simple boxes. There's something to be said for how simple and easy this is. While probably being just as effective at um, keeping the game in good shape. All right. Where is... Okay, the glue's going to touch there. And there. And there. And along here. There. So yeah, it's definitely worth planning ahead. Nope, see, I didn't plan ahead well. Put the glue on that side, and it's going to touch on this side. Just as I was thinking of commenting about planning ahead, I fail at it. Okay, one more piece here, and then I gotta clean up some of this extra glue. I got Kleenex here. Thanks, Hitman. <laughs> Hitman likes my shirt. What did I do with the other piece? Seriously, what did I do with the other piece? Did it fall? It did. There we go. I didn't even notice I knocked that over. Okay. Uh, this side, this flat, this flat, this side, this flat. Alright, there we have box number two. Thank you for hosting Gold Public. Just trying to get some of the excess glue off. All right, there we have the second box for the eminent domain box insert from Folded Space. Set that over here with the other one, and now I am building the exact same thing. So, <laughs> those of you on YouTube, if you wish to skip ahead, now's your chance. I am going to build a second one of the same box. Again, yeah, everything is coming off this frame fantastically. Everything is really well cut. It's just popping right off. Nothing's catching. Again, we're going to start with a really quick dry run. I've already built one of these, so this should be pretty simple. I'm going to do that, and we're going to go on this side. Get that up in there, and then we're going to put two doors on this front here. There we go. Quick, simple dry run.
I do apologize if anyone can hear the lawn more. It seems that my neighbor decided that now is a great time to cut the grass. Which is fair. They don't know I'm recording something right now. This edge, this edge, and this edge. The other thing I want to make sure I get that I didn't get on the other one is there and there. There we go. Nice snug fit. Really nice. Perfect. Glue in and sliding things together. That's pretty much all this requires. I have a hobby knife in case I have to trim anything, but that hasn't been necessary at all, which is good. Perfect fit. Nice and easy. This one's going to better even, going together even better than the last one. Hold that one for a second. Just I don't want that to come apart at the top there. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask. Seems like overall this is going to be pretty quick. I will say the Gentis Deluxe one took a while. Got some excess glue to get rid of. So yeah, you definitely do need the glue. It's not quite tight enough to just hold through friction. All right, another box. Let's line these up a little. We got a box. We got a card holder. We got another box. What is next? A little tiny tray. So from sheet B1, so that is this one, we need, let's hold this the right way. What am I looking at here? So we need this. Try not to take off what I don't need yet. I don't want to have to hunt for stuff later. And then we need this here. This here, this little piece here, and a piece there. All right. Does it matter which side the piece with the notch goes on? No, it did not. Uh, you just got to make sure you put the glue on the right side. So they're, they're mirrored, so they've been identical. So far, everything has fit either way. Nothing has had to, uh, like, this could have flipped either way. It's actually kind of brilliant design that way. That way you can't screw it up, which is a nice bonus. I have had these inserts where you can assemble them the wrong way, and that's never good. All right, so again, dry run. Put this on. See, uh, that obviously isn't how it doesn't fit. See, this is smart. So I obviously have to put that this way, and it fits that way. So this one does have an extra notch on it, so it's nice of them to show me which way it's going to go. And then this obviously can't go there, so I'm not sure. Let me see. This is going to go in the middle here. And then which side's going to get the, the bumps? They're going to go in the front here. So again, we're going to have a, a finger gap, so it's going to be easy to get components out. And then this is going to close off the back. So we're going to have a little tiny compartment for something. And then... Uh, bigger something that looks like I don't know what cards would be in there. It's awfully small for cards, so I'm not sure what's going to go in here. Start with one of the long sides. Uh, 
in the back. Then the other long side. It's definitely not going to be overly fancy. There's no artwork or anything on any of these, but you know what? You don't need anything. Standard gray works for a sci-fi game. Let me think. That needs glue. This needs glue. And then this edge needs glue. That's probably the fiddliest bit I've had to use so far. And it went on nice and nice easy as well. Just trying to make sure this one's actually kind of squared up. They give credit to whoever comes up with these patterns. Like technically, Almost anyone could probably build their own box insert of the foam core, but someone doing this designing is really nice, and then they throw it in a laser cutter and bang. Alrighty. We have a small tray to leave to dry. And just a little bit of excess glue. Oh, I almost forgot the top. I gotta put that in still. Ta da! Small tray with slot for something. I have no idea what off the top of my head. Add that to our growing line of bits. And we are now on to the other side. Tray B. Right here. Wow. Everything's just falling apart here. I am getting lots of bits I don't need. So yeah, that's going to be a little difficult to figure out what's what once we get going. Because I got stuff falling off. So this I don't even think is a piece. Oh, we'll see. So I need this, 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 this. I'm obviously missing something here. So one of these I did not get off tray B. I said tray B is literally self-destructing here. Bottom piece, so that's got to be that one that fell out earlier. That's too big. Where did we put the piece that came out earlier? I don't know what I did with it. Oh, up here. This is one that fell off when I was trying to assemble the other thing. Yep. There we go. Found it. And then we got extra stuff falling off. Hey, tech. All right, dry fit. So the stuff's cut so well that it kind of falls off as you're assembling other parts, which is a bit of a disadvantage. That's where it would kind of help if these all had something on them that just said A, B, C, D. So that's what we're building next. We did a quick dry run. Now we're going to glue it starting with the long edge. And I'm just using a standard white glue. Nothing fancy here at all. It's what worked in the past, and I think it's probably the best. You definitely don't want like a super glue, because super glue can melt the foam. Some brands, why take the chance?
and the next long wall. back wall. Yeah, this is definitely one of the easiest inserts I've ever built. This is, except I can't seem to hold on to anything. But no overly small parts, nothing difficult. Nothing that's been difficult to fit. Everything's gotten fit in together perfectly. No issues, no complaints. If you want a good intro, if you're intimidated by doing box inserts and want a good intro, it's a good spot to start doesn't get much more basic than just simple boxes and dividers. Nice and easy. All right, I am just gonna take a quick second over here to get some of the glue off my fingers. <laughs> so I'm getting little bits of glue and it's drying on my fingers. All right, cleaning up the bit of excess. So I do have some excess on the inside. I want to make sure I get rid of this little ball in there. So I'm just using little bits of foam that came. There was a little, some extra bits I cut out of the first piece. I'm just using that to clean up. So I don't have any pools. And the main reason for that actually is just time sake. I don't want it to uh, take too long to dry. So we're gonna put that over there and move on to a very thin tray, it looks like. Tray five. Again, I've got stuff falling off this tray B, like crazy. This should be all I need right there. So we are gonna have a very thin tray with a divider. Divider here, end piece, end piece, done. Nice, simple, thin tray. Same deal, I'm gonna start with the long edge. Yeah, this is definitely one of the more basic trays I've ever made. You know what, if it does the job, I'm not gonna complain. It doesn't have to be complicated to be good. Oh, you know what? I should have did this other side before I did that piece. That M piece. I can still do it, but now I have to notch under something. That's never easy. It's always easier to notch over instead of under, though not that that was hard. <laughs> Guess it wasn't that big a deal. I'm very much used to using wood inserts, and wood inserts definitely are less forgiving. They don't move as easily. Oh, I need these corners. That's the important place is the corners. It's most where it's most likely going to come apart if it does. And the divider. One of the nice parts about white glue too is it dries clear, so even if you do end up with like a glob somewhere, it's not like the, the these pieces are, are snug fit so something's going to fit perfectly inside. Having a little bump of glue in there is not going to hurt anything. There you go, nice shallow tray. And it's interesting to note those are the exact same height as one of these, which may be important in a little bit. All right, tray 6A, we're back to the A's. We are back to the A's. We're probably going to have to do two of whatever this is we're going to be doing. 6A, we just need these two pieces off the bottom. And then that tray is done. So lots of extra foam. Uh, if you're into hobbying and so on, like if you play Warhammer or something, keep these. Great for making conversions and sceneries. You take a couple of these I-beams, put them on the side of a cardboard box, and you got the side of a building. No reason to throw these out if you're a, if you're a war gamer into making terrain. If you're just playing board games, you can probably toss it. 
Get a hold of your wargaming friends and see if they're interested in it first, though. Okay, then we're going to go back over to the other A. And we need the same two pieces on here. And look, it there you up. We're done with that, too. And then on the Bs, we need this big box up here. And there goes the rest of the B parts. Did that come off the A or the B? I don't even know. This was with this. Yes, they match. All right, another basic box. This entire thing is a whole bunch of just basic boxes, which is fine. If it works, it works. If they're all the right size and they hold the bits. So this one is just going to be a very basic box. We got one more step after this one. And we're going to see how well the glue dried, because I don't want to put cards anywhere where there might be wet glue. No cards anywhere near the wet glue. So what we might do then, I don't know, I, I want to catch it in the video, me trying to put everything in. So I'll probably stay live in between and kill some time, waiting for things to dry. But through the magic of video editing, I am sure the YouTube version will just jump right to me putting stuff into the box. Because movie magic right there. I think the fact that I can keep talking while doing this shows that it's not overly difficult. doesn't require a huge amount of concentration. I said that and I'm going to put this piece on backwards. I don't even think you can put this on backwards. No, this would fit either way, so can't even mess that up if I tried. This is a nice snug box. One of the great things about folded space inserts or foam core inserts is how light they are. One of the big disadvantages of the wooden inserts is how heavy they make your games. Like, it's surprising. Especially my Race for the Galaxy insert. That made that game weigh so much more. Then, of course, is Gloomhaven. I have a wooden insert for Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven already wore, weighed like 25 pounds. Now it's up to like 36. It's crazy. All right. Done. Box. Last one. What do we got left? A tray. So that's just a thin box, as far as I can tell. So we got this piece, this piece, this piece. And a couple ends. Oh, we got an extra piece here we got to get rid of. There we go. See how easy that came off? There we go. This is going to be our final component. So not the most dramatic assembly I've ever done. I don't think anyone's going to really need to watch this for tips and tricks. I didn't know going in. Some of these inserts are definitely worth watching someone assemble them. So you don't make the same mistakes. So the first one I ever built, I, I messed up. I did some bad things. And it was not good was for suburbia and I put something on upside down and ended up with this notch sticking out of the bottom that meant that the rule books and the boards didn't even fit so I had to file that notch off and that was not easy to do once it was already assembled and of course I was silly and I used glue because I was like oh this is a box sensor it says it'll hold itself together but I'll use glue and make it as strong as possible that was a bad choice Hello, Sean. Yeah, I said that at the start of the video. This will be the box insert curse. I will never play Eminent Domain again. Because that's what happens once you assemble box inserts for your games. You stop playing them. At least that happens to me. I hope it doesn't happen to anyone else. I do plan on playing it more. Uh, if you head over to TabletopBellhop.com, you can read my review of Eminent Domain Escalation. And I'm currently working on a review for Exotica. Uh, it hasn't been finished yet due to the fact that right now it's really difficult to play with more than two people because I only have two people in my household, myself and my wife, that would enjoy this kind of game. And this is going to be it. The last sliding piece, sliding it in. That's it. That is it for this box insert. We're just going to have to clean up some excess glue. I will admit, my fingers are coated. I got little bits of glue everywhere. 
I think that's just a white glue curse. Anytime you use white glue, it gets everywhere. Well, this actually says folded space on it. I didn't even notice that. Oh well. It's going to be upside down because I guess I could have pushed it to put that on this side. But that's fine. All right, so what do we have left over? We have the rest of this, and again, I recommend don't necessarily toss these out. See if your wargaming friends want them. These are great. This type of foam core is great for scenery, right? You just take this pillar piece here, and they can cut and make that into all kinds of things. You cut it into bricks. You can use it for uh, decorating the side of a building or whatever. Foam core is really versatile stuff. Along with that, there's not a lot of them, but here are my little leftover bits. That's it. Not a lot of wasted foam in this particular set. So we got some wasted bits here. Those I am going to throw out. If I still actually did miniature gaming, I would keep those. So now we get to the part where I don't want to put any of these components in here without um, without them drying. Because I don't want to get my cards or anything glue on them, right? So I'm just trying to get some of the excess glue to spread out a bit so it'll dry a little quicker. So it's not going to take too long for this stuff to dry. What I will do though, because it's not going to stick to the bottom of the box, is see how this fits. So, it looks like we put this here. That fits nice and snug. Oh, I'm a little off camera. So we got a spot for all our cards. Again, this you're not going to be able to take out, because there's no bottom. Cards would fall right through. I do have a little drop of glue in here I want to try to clean up. There we go. So again, it's going to take forever to dry. Then it says we put these in this. Okay. Why these have a lip? Okay, because they go like this. So the lips face each other. So if you look, there's a notch here. I can't show that very well for this way. A notch here that supposedly holds the bag. Uh, the bag must be something from the expansion. I don't know. <laughs> uh, then we have these two go together here. And then finally, we have these, and does the order matter? It shows this, this one on the bottom, then this one, then this one. Interestingly, that sticks up higher than everything else. I don't know if that matters for any particular reason. So there you have the eminent domain box insert from folded space. Yeah everything in here what's going to be nice and this is what i like about box inserts like these is except for the cards the cards will stay here these come out while you're playing and you're just like here you go these are here and here these can all come out while you're playing so you can just put the stuff right out on the table and whatever these are going to hold can all come out while you were playing so there you have it uh that is the eminent domain box insert for uh from folded space for eminent domain from Tasty Minstrel Games, it holds everything from the first three expansions. So Exotica, Escalation, and the one I don't have, and I'm drawing a total blank on the name of it, Oblivion. Oblivion is the last one. So let's see. So people on YouTube, here is where we fast forward for the box insert to dry so I can dry fit everything in at least once. For those of you here live, thank you for joining me for this. Feel free to stick around while I wait for glue to dry. But at this point, you're basically watching glue dry. What I'm trying to do is get any, you can see any, like, pools. I'm just trying to break up the pools so they'll dry a little quicker. White glue dries quick, but not too quick. All right, I am going to grab... The web page and see if it's anything special. Many of the trays can be utilized during play. Yep. These are the trays for the fighter tokens, the clout tokens, the resources. The cards can be sleeved. Large game tiles. These need to be assembled as mirror images of each other so that the dips in the side walls are facing. Yep, we did that. Tray for the large cards in the game. Has no bottom and is meant to stay. All cards can be sleeved. That's good to know. 
The game boards need to be placed into the box in this following sequence. First place the cloth bag inside the top two, and then the central card display. So that was important, actually. So you know how I said how the one thing was higher than the others? There's a reason for that. So this is going to go here. These go here. And this stack is actually higher. And there is a reason for it. And that reason is that the board goes here. Oh, look at that. See, that's brilliant. That, that is really nice, actually. That's nice and flush now. Smart. Then the rule books and so on. All right. What do we got? Is everything dry? Not quite. This is looking pretty good. I really don't want to glue a card <laughs> to this. That would kind of ruin the fun. All right, let's see what goes where. Let's see if we can figure this out. What goes in this little thing? So I don't even have cards. So this is for small cards. The small cards, I don't even know what they hold. Clout tokens and resources. Yeah, so I don't have any small cards in my game. So that's what this is for. So we don't need that one. This one is for the different resource tokens. So I gotta say, at this point, I don't know how much better this is than what I was already doing with my copy. Nice part about this being shallow is it's going to be easy to take them out. So there you go, tray for the resource tokens. Then this tray. I obviously haven't waited long enough for the glue to dry because that just came right off. It gets these on this end. And fighter tokens, fighter tokens. chips over here where I find all these fighter tokens. That is a close fit. Alright, one more. There we go. Victory tokens and fighter tokens. That's it for these three. So then this, again, is something I don't even have. It must be some kind of tokens. So tokens, round tokens. So this one I don't need. And this is all the fighters. So what I'm probably going to do is split up my fighters. So you know what? I'm going to keep the three big ships out. No, you know what? I'm going to put fighters in here. So normally you would put the tokens from Oblivion in here and the, the, the resource tokens. The various tokens that show um, the different moves you would put those in here but what i am going to do is i'm going to use this for my tiny ships and then i'm going to put the medium and big ships into this taller one so that makes more sense to me because most of the time if you, unless you're doing warfare you're probably only going to use mostly small ships anyway even with escalation
So yes, normally these small ships would be in here, so you would have all the ships, and you would use one of the Oblivion things for this. Pull that aside. Get all this out of the way. So here's all your turn order. Turn phase cards, basic fleet, mining cards. I'm going to split these so they're actually basic fleet, mining, improved fleet, mining, mining, turn order. Is that all of them? Looks like that's all of them. So we're going to take all these. We're going to put them in one of these. It's a nice good fit. Lots of room if there was more. Like I said, I love this that I can get in here. That is fantastic. That's nice. Instead of just being a box. So that's easy enough. Then we should have all of the starting worlds. Which we have here. So many baggies are going to be left over. So we have all the starting worlds. Nice and simple. And again, I love the fact I can get in there. So we're good. Oh, yeah, make these mirror each other. Though I don't have the baggie, so I don't even know what that's for. Then we have these. Ships and ships. Then we have all these. I'm not using that one tray. Alright, cards. So, one of the things I'm slightly disappointed in already is I don't see a good way to separate out the expansion. Because I, I'm not sure what they plan on putting in what sets of cards. Does it even tell you? It just says there's spots for all the cards to be sleeved. So it doesn't really recommend it. So Scenario is a nice small deck. I'm going to throw that in front. Next I've got all of the, the roll cards. Right? All of the roll cards. Because once you get into the expansions there's a ton of these. What I'm going to separate out are the five or more player roll cards. Is there a reason to do that? I don't think there is. You know, I'm going to put them aside in case I don't see what else I want to use that spot for. So those are going to go in the back here. Again, this would fit sleep cards. I don't tend to sleep my cards. I realize some people think that's heresy. Then we have all the world cards. So also note, I don't have all the expansions. So if these don't seem tight enough, that could be why. And then we have the technologies, so I currently have my technology split by world type, but that's not going to work too well in here. So I think we're going to put all the technologies together. Or we could split them up as the ones that um, require ships. I could split those out, because those are the ones you only use if you're playing with Escalation. But I think at this point, I'm just going to put all my technologies together. So I have to admit, I slightly prefer my bags for that. Okay, technology is going to be the biggest deck, so we're going to rearrange things now. I missed an improved fleet. Alright, so technology is now the largest deck, so we're going to slide this down. Worlds. We're going to slide roll cards down. And we're going to put technologies here. And again, there's a nice thumb thing here too, right? Like that makes that's easy to get out. I can't complain about that at all. And we'll keep the fifth player cards separate because I got a slot for them. Got all these baggies I don't need anymore. Then the board goes over here. I know what's brilliant about that too is it's also going to keep these ships in. But there's nothing to cover these up. So I'm going to be smart here. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to put this on top. But that's just to keep everything in place. This way. If things do get bumped around somehow, nothing should move. So we throw this right here. It should fit nice and snug, and it does. Then we need rule books. So we have the two different rule books next to each other. We've got the silly um, tech tree. Note that these are extra and don't come with the game because I have some stuff I printed off. So 
So there you go. So I will note it does not quite close all the way. It's really, really close. Like, like really. Look how close that is. Oh, well, it's bouncing up on the one side. It's really close to closing, like millimeters. Like that is not really going to take any additional space on my game shelf than the core box, just barely, just a little tiny bit. So it's a little bit higher, and that's mainly the rule books. But if I could take the rule books out, we would be all good. So one last time, just to see everything, so you can see what went where. Oh, I missed a ship. So there we go. I got to open it up anyway. So here you go. Let's say I'm going to sit down and play a minute domain. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take my rule books and stuff, toss them aside. Who needs those? You know how to play, right? Then we're going to put the board out. You know, open it up, put the board out. Then we're going to sit here and put the ships out. Here you go. Here's all the, the small ships. Here's all our startup setup cards. Here's our deck. Shuffle this, toss it right back in here. No reason not to just use this the entire game. Here's your draw deck. Shuffle these up. Oh, these are starting plans. Shuffle these up, put it in. All right, draw your starting planet. Big ships. Note the small ships could have fit in with the big ships. Then over here, we've got resources. Like, here you go. We're just going to put that on the table. People can grab the resources as they need them. we got victory point tokens, and we have ships. So the one disadvantage here is the victory point tokens. There are the ones for the uh, um, fifth player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those and throw them in here, assuming they fit. Because I'm sure that's for something for escalation. So those have a blue on them. So we're, do they fit? Yeah, they fit. They're not, obviously not meant to go there, but they're going to work. So we'll put all those in there. And then you have all your cards. So you're like, all right, here's the technology decks. We'll split those up. Here's your different roll cards. Here are your planets. Here's your fifth player. And here are your scenarios. Done deal. This I cannot take out of the box. It is not designed to come out of the box. So that is it. We'll toss everything back in here quick. See how fast I can get this assembled and put away. Though I don't actually have to worry about these facing each other because I don't have the expansion that needs that piece. It's that into that side. This on here. Again, I want to put that on last, sorry. Drop that in. Drop this in. Drop this in. Put the board in. Split the instruction books up. This on top, this on top, my own reference material on top, toss a lid on, done deal, eminent domain. That's it, there we have it, my copy of eminent domain all blinged out with a folded space box insert, uh, so far thumbs up, um, really impressed by the quality of that folded space insert, really basic, it's just a bunch of boxes, um, some have some nice thumb holes cut in, but what's smart is they did some certain things that while we were building it didn't make a lot of sense like one area is a little higher well that's so the board fits and there's another spot where there's divots and you're like okay you gotta make those divots facing each other and that's so the bag fits from oblivion so all makes a lot of sense it all works really well there's no additional real weight to this i probably took out as much weight in baggies and um, plastic containers that i was using for my bits as i put in in folded space um foam core so that was it. That That is um, me building and then putting the pieces in the eminent domain or ED, what do they call it? E-M-D-O-M, F-S-E-M-D-O-M, folded space insert designed for eminent domain from Tasty Minstrel Games. Fantastic game. Uh, if you want to see my thoughts on eminent domain, head over to tabletopbellhop.com. Click on reviews. You won't find a review for the original game because I've owned this for a long time and I blog hasn't been on that long but there is a review for escalation and coming soon there will be a review for exotica as soon as i can play it with more than two people um other than that i am the tabletop bellhop your cardboard concierge um answering your gaming and game night questions if you've got a gaming related question of any type feel free to send it to questions at tabletopbellhop.com and then grab your pod catcher and look for the tabletop bellhop gaming podcast where you can find our weekly podcast where we answer those questions we actually do that live on Twitch Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Easterns. So if you're free Wednesday nights, join us on Twitch, and my co-host and I, Sean, will answer one of your gaming and game night questions, then we usually do a review, and then we do a week in review and talk about the games we've been playing for the last week. 
Finally, the last thing I got to do for self-promotion is I do have to mention we do have a Patreon. So if you appreciate this video and the work we're doing, please head over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and consider tipping your bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano. Good night and game on. <laughs>